Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 334th episode of The Simple Sophisticate, and welcome to an episode for my fellow Francophiles. Yes, we are going to talk about all things French because this coming Thursday, as often non-French folks call it Bastille Day, Le 14 Juillet, the 14th of July, the storming of the Bastille, the national or should I say, Bon Fête National takes place. I think I've, I've said far too many things, <laughs> but this Thursday is Bastille Day or La 14 Juillet. And I have 25 ways for us to celebrate this special day in my heart and perhaps in yours. It is always a day that I acknowledge and do something special. And in fact, very special things have happened on this day in my life. I share all of those life, personal life events in my new book, The Road de la Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment. In fact, this month, because it is a a meditations book, there's an entry for every single day of the year. Chapter seven is July, and July is all about France. Titled The Gifts of France, Awakening, Savoring, and Being True to Oneself. So if you haven't picked up the book yet, or if you have, and you want to escape to France, read chapter seven. All the entries are inspired by my experiences and times and memories in the culture. So this episode was inspired by a post I shared last year, and I've updated it for the podcast because there are so many French inspired posts. If you haven't, if you've only been a podcast listener, please feel free to visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life. And on the menu of the homepage underneath the header, you'll see that it says French inspired. And then next to that is British inspired. And then a bunch of other things, books, podcasts, cooking show, all the things that are predominant to the foundation of The Simply Luxurious Life. And if you click on French inspired, a drop down menu appears And there's all sorts of specific things that are solely French focused. And you can find all the French posts in one spot. You can also, as you may already know, find all the French podcast episodes in one spot as well. Let's get into this celebration of all things French as we look ahead to Thursday, the 14th of July. To those of us celebrating outside of France, we may be celebrating France's national holiday with an exclamation, as I mentioned at the top of this episode, of Happy Bastille Day. But within the borders of France, as I have been reminded more than a few times, it is Bonne Fête Nationale or La Coteau's Juillet. Whatever you prefer to utter, it is a day of celebrations for Francophiles. And while the Simply Luxurious Life and the Simple Sophisticate podcast, our entire premise 
when it comes to living simply luxuriously. It draws much inspiration from the French way of life. Today, I have lined up 25 ideas for you to celebrate July 14th in your own way. I've included, if you visit the show notes today, the many pictures from my trips to France. And the first picture is a picture of a vineyard in Provence, specifically Vaison La Romaine, where I went to a cooking school in 2018. And I had to walk by, had to, I had the opportunity to walk by this vineyard every single day on my way to class on this small country road. And I would be walking by it sometimes in the middle of the day, but often in the morning and especially in the evening after we had had a long, lovely meal and the sun would set and it was just, well, so still and the cicadas were singing and the vines were just creating this environment for the eyes that just took your breath away. As you all know, I returned to France the following year in 2019, and then most recently I've been to Paris, but not into the countryside, which I long to get back to this past April, Um, and it was just an absolute uh, refreshing opportunity to, to even just step foot on the terra firma of France. But if we can't be there, and I know that many of us would like to be there, but if we can't be there... We have an opportunity this week to pay homage from afar. We can absolutely partake in this annual celebration. I am looking forward to even more deeply celebrating this year's events in the simple activities that fill my day. And this this increases every year as I become more cognizant and more appreciative and more grateful for all that France and the culture that I have explored and I have experienced has brought to my life and really elevated my everydays. It could be simply the sipping of a French day in the morning, or it could be watching the 17th stage of the Tour de France, which is part of our list today. It could be making an herbe gougere for a perotif in the evening and bringing them with me to gather with a friend who grew up in Belgium at her home here in Bend. That is something we did last year on Bastille Day is she invited me over for dinner and we had the most lovely four course meal, maybe five courses actually. Anyway, it went long into the evening, into the night, and I still remember her saffron infused sauce for her shrimp, her celery root appetizer with fresh crab, and all the pairings of wine and sparkling wine. It was lovely. But let's get to this list, shall we, to further explore the many ways we can celebrate La Quatorze Juillet. Number one is something that I had to turn it off for our recording because obviously that would not work. But I have been watching La Tour de France in the background when I'm working in the office, when I'm done working in the office after I've done my errands about town in the evenings. I'm sitting down and I'm watching La Tour de France. It started on July 1st. It runs through the 21st of July. If you haven't been watching it yet, I highly recommend it if you're a Francophile. Whether you cycle or not, I do not cycle. I like sports. I do enjoy being active, as you know, but I've never been a cyclist. I've learned a lot about the sport just by watching this event. It's the only cycling event I watch. Why? Because it's in France and because you get to see all the beautiful countryside and every year the the, 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 the path of the route is different. In fact, this year they started in Denmark, which, which, which was absolutely phenomenal as far as, well, everything, but the crowds were absolutely, not only were they polite and appreciative, but they were en masse. I mean, there were so many of them. It was so much fun to see. But now we are, I believe today as I'm taping this, we are in stage eight today. And, uh, Yeah, with all the Mondays taken off for rest days, you can watch this on Peacock. You can watch it with ads or without. I don't normally stream Peacock, but I only stream it for one month a year to watch this event. And it costs, I think, $12. Without ads, it saves you so much time and you can watch it whenever you want. And I love that. So that's number one. That's the first way you can celebrate or savor the French culture a little bit. And, uh, Tip your hat in appreciation to a culture you so adore. 
The second one is to plan and then shop for a favorite French meal. As I mentioned last year, um, my friend invited me over for dinner this year. I will be enjoying it at home with Norman, and I am so excited to be able to come home from the market the day before, because our market is on Wednesday, have a recipe in mind. There's so many that I've shared on the blog. In fact, many of the recipes in my cooking show, The Simply Luxurious Kitchen, are French-inspired recipes. Um, I've included the recipe to Moules Meunier à la Crème, which is an easy recipe if you love mussels. Uh, you can also make the Myers lemon tart. As I mentioned at the top of this episode, herb gougeres, otherwise known as cheese puffs <laughs> with herbs in them. But I've made, I, there's so many recipes that are French inspired. And um, I look forward to coming back with season five this September. I've been taping a few of the episodes already. And uh, so far, all of them have been French inspired. In fact, one recipe was inspired from a meal I had at a cafe in the seventh arrondissement. It was fantastic. So yeah, select a, a menu that is French inspired that you enjoy cooking, maybe something new, maybe something that you've long made and love and settle in to make something scrumptious so you can enjoy that evening or that day and just toast to France. Number three is to not forget the cheese or fromage and salad. And this is a course that comes after the main entree. So you don't have your salad before your entree in France. I think we've talked about this many times before. You have it after the main entree and you pair it with your cheese. If you're going to have some form of cheese, you can have just wonderful offerings of cheese to taste. I have also made a souffle and served it during this portion of the meal, but you always pair it with a simple green salad tossed with vinaigrette, homemade vinaigrette. So simple to make vinaigrette. You went three to one, so three parts oil. So it could be extra virgin olive oil, or if there's another oil you prefer, three to one, and the one is to acid. So it could be your balsamic vinegar, which is something I do often. It could be sherry. Um, vinegar, it could be red wine vinegar, it could be, I mean, there's all the different vinegars out there. And then you add some pepper and then you add a little bit of Dijon mustard and you whisk that together. And that is your simple dressing. Now you can do it so many different ways, but that is a basic one that I use almost all the time. So that's number three. Don't forget the course that comes after the main entree, but before the dessert, the cheese and salad course. Number four is to play a game or two of petanque. Now, this is a game that I enjoyed watching out the window of my Paris hotel or my hotel particular in Montmartre, which was near Sacre Coeur. And I have a video of it, a short video on the show notes. You can watch two gentlemen playing this game, which is to Americans might remind you a little bit of bowling, um, but uh, it's also known as bowls um, in other countries. But um, it's an outdoor game um, on sand, typically fine sand, it could be dirt. And um, I've not played it with someone who knows how to do it, but I do like watching it. It's quite fun. Number five is gather with fellow Francophiles for a French meal beginning with an apero time. Aperitif or apero time is a time to slowly ease into winding down the day. You're never just drinking. You're always pairing it with something and something very simple to offer your guests. It's not going to be something fancy. It's going to be something good, satiating, typically savory. Could be nuts, could be... Uh, traditional bread from from your town and in, in, in Provence we enjoyed a fougas which was lovely <laughs> could be breadsticks it could be meat it could be anything as long as it's simple for you the host and pair it with a refreshing drink whatever that might be usually wine but it doesn't have to be it could be champagne it could be sparkling wine it could be a cocktail if you really want the cocktails. I go for my wine though. I definitely go for my wine. But whatever you enjoy or your guests will enjoy. Number six is pack a picnic and go somewhere amongst Mother Nature. Don't forget to pack the wine and the bistro wine glasses. I've included La Rocher's bistro wine glasses. They are so sturdy. They're not going to break on you unless you do some serious damage with your um, <laughs> picnic basket. 
but I've linked to them. I have a few of them and they were actually a giveaway a couple years ago during the Simply Luxurious Life's annual French week. They're not that expensive and they are what you would typically see at a bistro on the Terrace and in, in France. They don't hold a lot of wine. They're just for sipping, but they are sturdy and I love mine. So that's number six, pack a picnic and go somewhere amongst mother nature. Seven is visit a local farmer's market and be sure to bring your market tote. As I mentioned, our, our, our market is on Wednesdays and Saturdays here. So thankfully I'll be able to go on Wednesday before the, the 14th of July and pick up, pick up some ingredients, maybe some fresh flowers. And, um, if you're curious or would like to explore some of the, the Provence markets, Um, I have a detailed post on the handful. I went to quite a few uh, markets in Provence and I share a bit of the history about them and where you can find them on this detailed post. And you can find that on the show notes. Oh, and I also share how to find your perfect market tote. And I've shared on the this and that weekly posts from time to time, different market totes. They are a plenty, it seems. Um, But you know, you want the right price point and you want the right style that works for you. I love having a double handle. So when I um, don't have anything in, in my basket, I will hold it by the short handle. And when I do have something in my basket, so it's a little heavier, I'll put it on my shoulders. And I vary that sometimes, but I do like having the double handle option. And I have that on two of my market totes actually that I picked up in France. And I really do like that. But I have a detailed post on um, how to find your perfect market tote. And you can find that on the show notes. Number eight, begin the day with a fresh baguette picked up at your local bakery. If you have a bakery that you love going to, fresh is best, as we know. No preservatives, all natural, few ingredients. I love a fresh baguette. Enjoy it with as a tartine in the morning, spread some butter, spread some jam on it. Enjoy it in the evening. However, you make a sandwich, the classic sandwich with um, prosciutto and brie. And um, just, yeah, I love that. I mean, what's wonderful about Paris, I remember we went to, or excuse me, I went to um, the boulangeries when we were in Paris this past April in the morning, I would go get our baguette or our croissants. And when I would get the baguette, I think I paid one euro and 20 cents. And some places you can just pay one, but usually the traditional uh, baguette is just a smidge more, but it's guaranteed that it only uses the five basic ingredients, no preservatives, and is the one you want. And I have a hard time paying for more than two dollars for a baguette here in the states when I know that it can be done so well so proficiently um, here but at the same time I want to support my local bakeries and I know their costs are going to be different because of where they source their items and especially with prices going up so it's a it's it's a shock to the system to have to come back and pay so much for a baguette but again if you if you have a local baker that you love and they make it as I mentioned with just the the basic ingredients, so no preservatives. It's so worth it. So that's number eight. Speaking of boulangerie finds, number nine is un croissant, s'il vous plaît. Pair your croissant with a cafe au lait or a hot cup of tea and just enjoy the moment for as long as you want to sit and relax. And croissant, I so appreciated a listener recently and I hope you're listening I'm not sure if you are but if you're listening I so appreciated the video you sent to me of a gentleman who was correcting his daughter constantly about saying croissant incorrectly she was saying you know the typical American way of saying it I can't even say it now croissant with the t at the end and it's croissant and uh anyway it just made me chuckle and I want to thank you for sending that my way but uh, yeah un croissant s'il vous plaît And I've included, I don't know, some of you may know and some of you may not, I make my own croissants and I enjoy a croissant every Sunday as a ritual and I get my French butter and I save it specifically for making those croissants. Um, uh, It's actually very easy to do and I'll include the recipe on the show notes. It takes a little time, but I have my batch done probably... Because you just have to make the dough. So you make the dough, say, before you go to bed at night. You can even make it early in the morning. But it needs to be in the refrigerator for about eight hours. 
But then after that, it takes me maybe two to at the most three hours to get them to the stage where I will eventually either freeze them or let them start to rise for two to three hours. But even the process is easy. It's so easy to make the actual croissant. It's just time consuming because you let it rise and you make the layers. So that is or was a recipe that was made on the Simply Luxurious Life Kitchen season two, episode six. And you'll want to check that out. Number 10 is along with the meal you're going to have tonight, if it's the 14th tonight, select a bottle of wine from your favorite French region or the next region of France you hope to visit as inspiration to bring your next trip to fruition. As we are now more able to travel, this is a lovely way to just literally taste um, where you will be going in the future and maybe provide a bit more inspiration. And I've again, I've included some wines that we tasted um, while in Provence. We, I, I finally was introduced to Chateau Neuf de Pape when I was there in 2018. I know I should have known about it many years ago, but I didn't and I loved it. We also tasted um, a handful of other wines uh, from that region. But Chateau Neuf de Pape is a wine I now will um, trust, whether I'm choosing it for dinner or giving it as a gift to a friend. But to be able to taste it in Provence, oh, at the vineyard, oh, it was pretty special. And there's a picture of some of the wines on the show notes. Number 11 is seek out French tea or tea and sip a hot cup in the morning to begin the day. And again, I'm just going to say it pair with a croissant. Why not? Um, I've said this kind of twice, but whether you are just sipping tea or if you're pairing it, French tea is lovely. I love my British tea. In fact, right now I'm actually sipping a British tea, Twinings, just an everyday black tea I love. But I love De Pelle de Thé's teas. Montan Bleu is my absolute favorite black tea. It has a, a little bit of lavender in it. But they have so many other wonderful teas. So Pelle de Thé, highly recommend checking them out. And there are others. De Montfrère, Mirage Frère. So two different tea companies that have brother in the in the name or the title. Those two are also very good, high quality French tea. So again, uh, de Montfrère, de Montfrère, Mirage Frère, and Palais de Thé. And all three of them will ship to the States. Number 12, cook a classic souffle à fromage avec fresh herbs. So a classic cheese souffle with fresh herbs. It is so simple. And I have the recipe on the blog. In fact, because so many people, when I posted this, I believe I posted it in 2020, were so tickled by this recipe. And also some said, how do you do it? There's no way I could do that. I am going to include this recipe in the upcoming season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen to show you how simple it is to make. Yes, you can make it. And oh my gosh, your taste buds will thank you. And I have made it for myself for an everyday, either lunch, late lunch, or dinner with pear with a green salad. or I, And I've also included it and made it for a dinner party, and it was an absolute hit. Because there's so many assumptions, and, and people are so fearful of making a souffle that they don't attempt it, when really it's actually one of the most simple things you can make. Um, and impress the pants off people, but also have a delicious meal, most importantly. All right. The recipe for that is on the show notes. You can check that out. Number 13 is organize a cheese and wine gathering. So if you love cheese, I love cheese. What I like to do actually, if I can't organize a wine gathering or cheese gathering with people, I like to go to my um, cheesemonger at one of my favorite grocery stores. And I have a nice fun fun um acquaintance relationship with a cheesemonger and I'll come in every once in a while and I'll say okay what is new and what should I try and most recently he had me try a cheese that was um covered in herbs from Corsica oh my gosh it was so good and they don't carry the same cheeses year round they try different things they bring ones back for certain periods of time and so I do like to ask their opinion and if it's just for me perfect you want to share with others even better not better just different and uh anyway so that's fun that's something I used to do a lot more of the gatherings with other people when I was um lived near Walla Walla and uh, all their vineyards and wineries it 
wakes up your palate. I guess that's what cheese does for me anyway. And, and even the wines too, if I'm really paying attention to what I like and what I love, um, cheeses and wines do that for me. And I have fun exploring different subtle differences between the two. So organize some kind of cheese appreciation night and pair them with wine. <laughs> All right, I have one sponsor I'd like to introduce you to, and then we'll get back to this lovely list of 25 things that you can do to celebrate La 14 Juillet. Bamba's mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bamba's, you are also giving to someone in need. Bamba's designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Everything they make is soft, seamless, tagless, and has a cozy feel. Bamba's no-show socks are designed for comfort while being specially engineered to never fall down. So let your ankles be free to soak up the sunlight. And Bombas t-shirts are made with thoughtful design features like invisible seams, soft fabrics, and perfect weight so they hang just right. And did you know that socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters? That's why Bombas donates one for every item you buy. So far, Bombas customers like you have helped donate over 50 million items of essential clothing. As a simple, sophisticate listener, go to bombas.com slash sophisticate and get 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate for 20% off. That's bombas.com slash sophisticate. All right, welcome back. Let's dive right back into our list. Number 14, as we celebrate July 14th, is watch a cozy French mystery series. I wrote a detailed post um, on six cozy French mysteries that I enjoyed. And I continue to add to this list, and I'll share those findings on the regular weekly this and that post. Most recently, this last Friday, I shared a series that I love watching. It's now going into its fifth season. It's called Sharif, and it's set in Lyon. And that's what I also love about different shows in that are French, is I don't have to just be in Paris. I love Paris, but I also like to see other cities and towns in the countryside in these shows, as much as practice my French, which needs a lot of brushing up. But I also enjoy watching those shows for that purpose, sincerely, because it lets me hear the informal and regular everyday spoken French. And I think that's very helpful. So I've linked that post on the show notes if you want to check that out. So six cozy French mysteries I have enjoyed. Number 15 is look around your home and discover how you can add a touch of France to your sanctuary or yet another touch as the case may be if you're like me. In episode 228, I shared 21 Parisian decor ideas from Inez de la Frossange's new book, Maison Parisian Chic at Home. And it's a detailed book. I actually really did enjoy that book. And there's some things that I know my style enough to know, ah, oh, that's not going to work for me. But there were a lot more that I did um, gravitate toward and consider. So I highly recommend tuning into that episode, which was episode 228. Add a touch of France to your home decor. Now, some things I've done in my house. I had a lot of British, as you know. I had a lot of cottage cozy decor and traditional English decor in my craftsman house. But I also, my kitchen is entirely a French kitchen in that regard. I mean, you all know I have a French stove, but also just the utensils and the displaying of my my tools. I, um... I also don't have a microwave. That's one thing that I have not had for now. Oh my gosh. Almost the duration of my blogging career. So 12, 13 years. Um, I don't I don't use one at all. I like to have French fresh ingredients. And then I use my oven if I need to hurt, heat anything up, but which is rare. I also, for French decor, my, my bedroom and my primary bathroom have a lot of French touches. The floor, the fixtures... I have, I call it Parisian elegance, very soft colors, neutral colors, and just the touches of the, of the soft brass, not shiny brass, but soft brass. And, um, just keeping it really simple, but paying attention to the, the textures and those details. So anyway, you can tour both of those rooms, the bedroom and the bathroom on the blog, if you become a top tier member. So be sure to explore that. 
on that note, before I forget, um, if you have been considering becoming a top tier member or a basic tier member, either one, prices will be going up for all the tiers and options for payments in January 2023. So you have about six months to really just consider which option would work best for you because once you sign up, you get that price for your duration of your membership. Even if prices go up in January, but you started, say, even December 25th, 26th, 27th, right up to the end of the year you have that price forever, as long as your membership is active. So you're grandfathered or grandmothered in, as I like to say. So I'm trying to give everyone a heads up well in advance so you can really think about what would work for you. All right, that was a side tangent. Let's move on. We gotta keep focusing on France, which is fun to do. Number 16 is shop and purchase French lingerie to update your lingerie capsule wardrobe. Now, I this was a timely... Um, item in this list because just recently a reader asked me about which French or if I use any or wear any French lingerie or what brands I use. And um, I wrote this episode of this. Yeah, it was an episode, episode 42 back in 2016, I believe it was. And I detailed, number one, how to create a lingerie capsule wardrobe, but I also share a long list of all the brands I recommend you shop from. Um, I don't have items from every single one of these brands, but I do have some from these brands. In fact, when I went to France this past uh, April, I went to the Bon Marché and um, I always like to pick up um, undergarments, sleepwear, things like that in France, um, more so than when I'm here in the States. And I found a lovely chemise from Abad, A-U-B-A-D-E. And it, had, it was silk, as I said, and it has detailing and lace. And it wasn't inexpensive, but I got the opportunity to try it on right there. And I was working with um, a saleswoman, and um, I did my best to speak French, and we figured it out. And I found something that I loved. And um, I only bought one, but it's something well-made that feels so good on the skin. And um, it is a brand I trust, so Abad or Abade. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, so my apologies there. But anyway, check out episode 42. And I have a, I just updated this post app actually this last week. I have a long list of all the sites for lingerie shopping. All right, number 17 is make a clafouti à charis with the cherries just now ready to harvest. My cherry trees, I have two cherry trees. They are full of cherries. They're green right now. But in a couple weeks time, they're about ready to turn beautiful red. They're a few weeks behind from previous years because we had a, a cool spring compared to previous summer or springs. So they'll probably be ripe at the end of July this year. But I just love uh, making a clafouti with cherries, which is so simple to make. I include the recipe. It was part of episode or season three of the Simply Luxurious Life cook, uh, cooking show. And um, one of the simplest things to make, it looks fancy, sounds fancy, but if you have milk and all you need is milk and eggs and um, a little bit of uh, flavoring, so it could be in your cassis or um, any kind of cherry liqueur, then you have your cherries. There's really not that much to this recipe. I can't even, I mean, it's just so simple. I recently just made one with cherries I froze from last year's harvest and it was so good, so good. All right, so that's 17. Make a clafouti with sherries. 18 is conclude the evening by watching a favorite French film. Oh, so many. I included 12 in a um, an episode from a handful of years ago. Um, but I have watched so many more since. In fact, this was episode 248. So if you haven't listened to episode 248, I share in detail the 12 French or set in France feel good films I love that um, came out in the past 10 years. And even since then, I've watched so many more and on the this and that's, as well as you know, and the petit plaisirs, I share the French film. So most recently, you know, I shared I fell. I also love La Femme, La Femme Fleu, um, the or also called The Rose uh, Maker. That's a French film that came out and became available just recently. And then I also watched uh, Delicious, um, Delicieux, um, set just before, speaking of July 14th, it came out just, or was set just before the French Revolution. All about food and countryside and France and oh, it's about food. <laughs> anyway, I highly recommend you watching that as well. 
So anyway, if you want to learn more or find more films that are French, um, that are lovely to watch, please listen to episode 248 or visit the blog 248. So as the day has been built, we're building this beautiful July 14th day. We've planned our meal. We've gone shopping for it. We have our wine. We, you know, we just, you know, consciously incorporating French culture into our life. And then we watch a film to conclude the day. Number 19 is to listen to a playlist that I compiled called Escape to France. And it's an over an hour of French music that you can enjoy. You can find it on Spotify. If you follow the Simply Luxurious Life on Spotify, you can see all of my playlists. But yeah, that one is all French. And I have another one that's non-lyrics. This one is has lyrics, some of the songs, most of the songs. But I also have one that is non-lyrical. So there's actually two French um yeah, and that's actually number 20. But if you prefer lyric free, listen to my French Jazz Cafe playlist. That's the one that's non-lyrical. Number 21 is make a simple French crepe for dessert. Yes. Last year or two years ago, I made a lemon and brown butter sweet crepe. And I make this whenever I want a simple dessert to take me back to France. I have the recipe on the show notes under number 21. It is just, it's bright and refreshing because the lemon, it takes me back to my childhood um, with the sugar and the simplicity of it. Get really good French butter if you can, or just butter in general. And um, oh, so good. That's number 21. Number 22, speaking of crepes, make a buckwheat crepe or galette. Because when you're using buckwheat, those were, you call those crepes galettes with prosciutto, gruyere, and egg. This was a recipe I shared in season three of a simply luxurious kitchen and again I, I keep saying this but I I want to share with you how simple these recipes are that are so full of flavor so good and easy to go to and don't take much time so I'm, I've enjoyed this for lunch dinner and even breakfast so buckwheat crepes with prosciutto gruyere and egg and number 23 is to read the French book to explore further the French culture in 2017, I shared 10 of my all-time favorite French books. Since then, I've shared so many more. If you go to the blog, to the menu, hover over shop. There's a long drop-down menu under shop. Click on Francophile Finds. You can also do this if you go, as I mentioned, with regards to the posts and episodes that are French-inspired. You can also just click on finds underneath French inspired and it will take you to all the books primarily are all books, but there's some films in there too and some other items um, that are French inspired. But I, I just highly recommend all of these books. These are all books I've read and think you might enjoy. So find a book that teaches you a bit more about the French culture. Number 24, speaking of books, Specifically, why not add a French cookbook to your kitchen library? Add one each year to further inspire your culinary journey into French cooking. A couple of years ago, I shared 10 French cookbooks for your kitchen library. As some of you may know, I have a, a cookbook library that's just adjacent to my stove, and it's just for cookbooks. And so many of the cookbooks are French inspired. And so I've shared 10 of my favorites, but there are so many more, so many more. All right. And again, you can find all of my recommended cookbooks underneath shop and then go to cookbooks or also under the French inspired on the main menu drop down, click on finds. Last but not least, so you have done all this celebrating and appreciating the French culture during your day. Something that I do every single night is fall asleep enveloped in French linen sheets. I learned so much about linen sheets and why I highly recommend and urge you to try to explore using them. Number one, they're highly sustainable because the flax crops, which you want to buy sheets with flax typically from France, northern France or Belgium, it's a drought resistant crop. They don't take up a lot of water. And they also, once the sheets are made, they will last you forever. I have sheets that I purchased. So I went to Brocant's. I have sheets that I found that were from years and decades and decades and decades ago. They are well made. They are of a fabric that's strong, 
but breathable. I use my linen sheets year round, winter, summer. They are cool. They are warm. I wrote a detailed post about why this is so. Sharon Santoni, when I was over in um, Paris or France during 2018, and I stayed at her house, she took me on different tours and such um, just around her, the area where she lives, which is Normandy. And that's the flax was just about ready to be cut. And then she talked me through a little bit more about this flax um, turning into linen and how that works. But I wrote a detailed post about this back then in 2018. And um, feel free to check it out. But whether it's new linen that you buy or brocante that you find at the market, make sure it is number one linen, not cotton. And it, and it will last you for your lifetime. It really will. I will never go to cotton ever again. I sleep so, so well. And that's also why it's an investment because you're probably not going to buy it very often. So you're going to pay a lot up front. Um, if you're buying linen, it's fairly cheap. You might want to check the origin of the linen, where it's made, where it's coming from. Um, because good linen costs money and that's the reason. Um, but it will last forever. Right now my sheets are air drying outside, my linen sheets. Um, and uh, oh, anyway, just another way to bring in the French culture into your everyday life. All right. That concludes the list for today. And with that, I will get to the petit plaisir. But before I do, mark your calendars. The seventh annual Simply Luxurious Life, seventh annual French week is almost here. It kicks off one month from July 14th. It kicks off on August 14th and runs through the 21st. It's always the second full week in August. You can look at the past weeks on the blog. If you go again to French Inspired on the menu, drop down, click on French Weeks. You can see all of the past years and click through and look at all the posts and giveaways. This is a fun week and we have a brand new illustration created by Sarah Locker for this week. You can see that illustration on the French Week page two posts every single day. There'll be giveaways. The giveaways are exclusively available um, for entering to top tier members only. So another reason to explore becoming a top tier member in the next six months. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. I really always look in, in, look forward to this week because I've never been in France during this time of year since I've been doing this event. And it does transport um, the community to France in many ways. So save, uh, save the date, mark the calendar, August 14th, the 21st. And I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. So this week's Petit Plaisir is one I actually briefly mentioned in previously in our list today, because it is a French film and it is well it's delicious literally the food they present on screen and then just the storyline and in fact Rotten Tomatoes gave it 93 percent it is set pre-French Revolution just just pre just prior to the French Revolution and it was filmed entirely in France and they shot it at the end of 2019, so they shot it pre-pandemic, but it wasn't released. They kept delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. Um, in the States, it wasn't released for us for streaming until this spring, June 1st, actually. But it's called Delicieux, or Delicious, and it stars Gregory Gadebois, and it tells the story of, because he's a talented, he plays a talented chef, and he worked for quite a long time for an a person of the aristocracy and the very first handful of scenes is about how he is let go by this aristocrat for no other reason than not because his food wasn't great but because of the traditional mores and what is acceptable and what is not long story short he leaves and wants nothing to do with aristocracy again and he starts to realize the true division between the aristocracy and the common man, the common people. And he opens his very first restaurant. And this is a, it's not a true story, but it starts to introduce historically how serving the public came to be. Because up until this point, predominantly, well, number one, you didn't have typical restaurants. You didn't have, you know, a, a chef serving the masses. 
um, in such a way to enjoy these delicacies. It was only for the aristocracy. It was a special and, and also decadent occasion. And so he sets up this restaurant out in the countryside. And there is a love story to this as well. Isabel Carré plays the main love interest, but she it's not intended to be a love story in that regard. She comes for her own reasons, and I won't spoil the plot for you at all, but she wants to learn how to cook from this great chef, from Pierre. And he eventually does start to teach her. And... Um, it is in French. I highly recommend you watch it with subtitles. Don't have it dubbed so you can really savor, no pun intended, the storyline, the emotions, and the strength of her. I love her character. So strong, so clear. There are moments where you are reminded how cliches, we're so used to cliches, we expect certain things, and it breaks some of these cliches, and it's so nice. And the French films tend to do that more often than not. But anyway, you can stream this on Amazon Prime, and um, I highly recommend watching it, especially if you are a food lover. You're going to begin the first few scenes just salivating. So here is the trailer for Delicieux or Delicious. <laughs> Du beurre, voyons, du beurre Faut faire bien, faire grand, faire savoureux. Si vous avez deux minutes, le duc aimerait faire son commentaire. Lanceron, vos cuissons étaient parfaites. Comment appelez-vous ces petits chaussons Le délicieux. Truffes et pommes de terre, c'est bon pour les cochons. <rire> Il nous prend pour décorer <rire> Excusez-vous. C'est vrai qu'il était cuisinier Tu peux pas renoncer à être enfermé ici alors qu'il y a tant de choses à vivre. Je m'appelle Louise, j'aimerais devenir votre apprenti. Tu es trop vieille pour faire un apprenti. J'ai perdu le goût de cuisiner. Apprenez-moi, et je suis sûre qu'il reviendra. C'est un bon point que vous avez là. Si vous donnez un peu de mal, les diligences s'arrêteront ici avant la fin de l'automne. Il faut partager cet endroit avec tout le monde. Noble, bourgeois ou paysan. Nous aurons besoin de tout l'espace pour une grande chambre à manger. Inventer un lieu de gourmandise, un lieu de bouche. Vous êtes en train de vous faire jolie réputation. Je parle de votre auberge jusqu'au château. Ici, tous les clients sont ducs et tous les clients sont rois. Le duc envisage de vous rendre une visite d'appétit. Vous n'avez plus besoin du duc de Chamfort. Vous vouliez être libre de créer de nouvelles recettes Vous l'êtes Oublie Chanfort et ses semblables, tu leur dois rien. Le monde est en train de changer. Il ne suffit pas d'avoir envie de manger, il faut savoir manger. C'est un art. La vraie cuisine n'est pas faite pour le commun des mortels. J'exige que vous fermiez votre gargote. Que fait le peuple Un jour, il s'assoira à la table. Et ce jour-là, Chanfort et ses semblables finiront pendus à des potences. Je vous ferai pendre. So again, this film is set on the eve of the French Revolution in 1789. So just months, weeks even before the French Revolution. And again, the food you're going to watch, you will want to go into your kitchen and, and start cooking after watching this film. I have a feeling, just have a feeling. It's called Delissou and it is available now on Amazon Prime or wherever you find your films for streaming. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. I hope you have a wonderful Le 14 Juillet or Bastille Day and savor the French culture wherever you are in our grand world. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I do hope you'll stop by and, and take part in this year's 7th Annual French Week on the Simply Luxurious Life blog. Again, that takes place this August, beginning the 14th through the 21st, always the second full week in August. I have a brand new episode coming in two weeks on the 25th, so stay tuned. And until then, bonjour. Bonjour. 
Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co. And to welcome Simply Luxurious Living into your everyday life, be sure to check out my new book, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, which was just released in March 2022 and became a number one bestseller in France travel and a number one new release in France travel in all four formats, hardback, paperback, audio, and ebook. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, be sure to pick up my first two books. Each are available in hardback, paperback, ebook, and at Audible for audio listening. The first is titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life and the second Living the Simply Luxurious Life. Readers can now join the more intimate Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which provides ad-free unlimited reading and access to exclusive content such as each month's A Cup of Moments video chat, tours of my home, Le Papillon, the regular monthly post, What Made Me Smile, and Saturday Ponderings, as well as the opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, and the cooking show, as well as receive exclusive news and an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free monthly newsletter, which arrives on the last day of each month. And there's a weekly newsletter, a favorite of listeners and readers, which is also free and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a cup of morning coffee and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Thank you for tuning in today. And beginning in September 2022, look for two new episodes on the first and third Wednesdays of each month. So a small change to the day of the week, this podcast will be shared, but always the first and third week of every month, a new episode to listen to. To be alerted to new episodes and when they become available, follow on Instagram, the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, and only the news about this show will be shared. Until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.